Hey, what's going on everybody? Thank you for clicking on the video. This is David Pendleton and today we're going to be talking about the pro level playoff tournament for Golf Clash. So congrats for making it this far. You know, it's very difficult to make the final rounds sometime, especially on a difficult tournament. Uh, I only made one of my two pro accounts, so I'm trying to get as many good looks as possible. Sometimes it's tough to do when you only have one account, but I got off to a very, very hot start, which I'm happy about. And then I cooled off um, on the back part of the front nine. So without any further ado, let's just go ahead and hop right into hole number one. So hole number one, we'll just play 10% at max. And because we're getting this uh, tailwind here, all we need is a Titan ball. We play six bars of top spin with two bars of side spin to the left. And we put our red ring right there on the rough line. The ball guy line is almost pointing to the rough. So what we do is we use curl just to make sure that we don't get ourselves caught into the rough. Again, I adjust 10% at max, and then I use half a ball of curl to the left. Now here you're gonna see on the drive, we get very close to clipping this rough and rolling out, but we just caught enough of the fairway to make sure we roll out to the part of the fairway that we want to be on. So very lucky there. You always have to be really careful um, as far as, you know, your curl goes on this hole. Leave us for shot number two. Shot number two, I play 0% at mid with my thorn here. Be careful with the green. The green is very glitchy. We do use one bar of backspin. Ball guideline going through the hole just like that. Again, this is a 0% pull at mid distance. Perfect shot. And we get the sink to fall into the cup. So that'll give you a good way to start off an eagle on hole number one. It takes us to hole number two. Hole number two, I want you to try 15% at mid. Uh, you're going to see why I suggest that here. But we're going to go with the Kingmaker just to reduce the wind. Obviously, on this type of par three, you could really use any ball that you wanted to. Any ball will give you a chance to drop it. We're not using... Um, any side spin at all, so just straight up back spin only. Here I make my adjustment, but again, I want you to try to adjust at 15%. 15%. Perfect ball. And here you're going to see that we're going to miss just barely by a fraction to the left hand side. And that was me pulling at 10%. So if we pulled an extra 5%, we'd pull a couple point two more rings or so, and that ball would have been more center of cup. So hole number two gives you a great chance to pick up a hole in one. Hole number three, um, I'm out of berserkers, okay? So that really stinks, but I'm out of berserkers. So I'm playing with a ball that's just like a berserker. The only difference is this one has more side spin. For video purposes, I did not use the extra side spin. I made sure I capped myself out at two so that anyone following would be able to kind of duplicate what I was doing here. So the side spin you see here, I've got five top, I've got two left. I have my yellow ring kind of over here by the rough line, just a little bit of it in the rough. I pull this at 10% at max. And then I use just a little bit of overpower, not a whole lot, but just a little bit. And we strike a perfect ball. And we get this thing to roll nicely onto the fairway, leaving us for a really good drive on hole number three. Now that's gonna take us to our second shot, which is played 10% at max. Again, with the side spin here, I made sure I cap myself out at two, but I'm using just a little bit of top combined with two bars of side spin to the right. So here, you know, I'm, I'm rolling out of the rough, which is what I'm trying to do. So about four and a half top, two right. You kind of have to gauge it depending on where you get on your drive. But with my cataclysm, that's what I want my ball guideline to look like. I know that that's not going to play true because I'm getting six mile per hour headwind. So I know that this wind is going to knock me down quite a bit once I land on the fairway because there's quite a bit of room from the fairway to the green. So um, I do a little bit of overpower.
as you can see, we come up short, but we'll take this all day um, on hole number three, especially when we get some type of form of headwind. Okay, hole number four, I'm going to explain the setup here. Now, um, this is Neo shot. This was sent to me by quite a few people on Messenger. Um, if I was needing extra drops on Pro to check out Neo's hole in one. So, uh, Neo starts his shot with a navigator. And this is something that I get questioned on a lot. So, other streamers that start with one ball, but then they swap to another one. Um, why do they do it? I get asked that a lot. I guess because they don't explain it. Uh, well, there's, sometimes there's different reasons. Sometimes it helps you find the minimum distance of a club line. Um, other times it just helps you set up a shot. And this is a time where it helps you set up a shot. So, for example, on this particular hole, all you want is one bar of left side spin. But for the wind purposes, we're going to take it with a kingmaker. Okay, so we're going to start off with a navigator where the wind is higher. We're going to start off with a navigator because we want to set the spin first. And by using a navigator, you cannot accidentally put one more bar of side spin to the left or right. So, for example, if you start off with a kingmaker, you might accidentally put one more than one bar of side spin because you can put up the three bars with the kingmaker. But here, you can, you know, jam it over as less as possible and it's going to cap you out at one bar, which is the exact amount that you want to use on this hole. So it's easier to set yourself up with a ball that will only let you do a certain amount of spin. That way you can't, you can't overdo the spin on accident and not catch it. So I just thought I would explain why we're doing that here. Um, because that's, that's a question I commonly get asked uh, whenever some other streamers do that. So as you can see, one bar of side spin to the left with about 0.9 to one bar of top spin. Now, here you're going to see the setup is going to be a little bit more difficult to duplicate because we're putting some of our red ring on the fringe and some of the red ring inside the rough. But what you want is your ball guideline pointing to the right side of the cup, just like that. So, you know, I've got to pause here for a second so you can kind of see the aim point. And then you switch to your kingmaker. Now when you switch to your kingmaker, that's when you go ahead and just pull your rings. And we're just playing this one one for one, that's it. One for one, that's it. You take a normal shot. What in the world happened to my video? Huh. Okay, weird. Oh, well, there's our shot. <laughs> and you're going to see here that you roll in a smack dab middle for a hole one. So always give credit where credit's due. That was Neo's shot that was sent to me, and um, you know, to my knowledge, at least that's why that's why he's setting it up the way that he is, so that it makes it much easier and much faster to just apply that side spin. All right, hole number five. Hole number five. I play it this way. I go no moving target with an APOC and a Titan. I want as much wind as I can here. That's why I'm not using a Kingmaker. But again, this is no moving target. Full top, full left. 10% at max. And you're going to see here that I go pretty heavy on the curl and pretty heavy on the overpower. This is not full OP. This is not full curl. That's going to be very hard to judge and duplicate. If you have like an APOC, you know, level um, probably like three or four, if you're in pro, you know, you might be needing to go full curl and, and more overpower. But this is a very dangerous shot, okay? I uh, wouldn't recommend it unless, you, unless you're off to a very hot start and you got to get that extra eagle. But if you are going to play this shot, you know, at least it is a no-moving target. Uh, I would really suggest, though, that you take a couple practice shots before you hop into the real deal. Because at the end of the day, you may go scuba diving on this hole, and that would be no fun. Okay, hole number six is going to be played 10% at max. Now... Again, I'm out of Berserkers, um, but that's okay. This is also a free-to-play ball. I was off to a really good start, and I decided to bust out a Bubba Ball, which was given away free by the game, so hopefully you've hung on to them. But here, I'm using this ball because it's a Power 5, and it's a Wind Resistance 3. It's a very good ball, especially for a hole like this, when off the tee box, you're getting a flicker of, of headwind. 
As you can see there, I made it from fairway to fairway, barely. I should have went with full OP. I left a little bit off of it to try to hit a perfect shot. So I would suggest, you know, you try to go full OP there if you're going to play that shot. Um, as you can see here, we start off off the tee box with, like I said, a little bit of headwind. If you're not going to try to play that shot and go for it, you're going to have to lay up and then lay up again, which makes picking up the eagle very, very difficult on hole number six. So here, um, you know, we get to play with our cataclysm. We go with quite a bit of top spin, not quite full top, just because we don't accidentally want to roll into the top rough there. And then we take our side spin. And from here, well, you can see my opponents in the rough. But from here, you know, we are going to be using um, just a tad of overpower and max right curl. We hit a perfect ball. Fast forward here. We land very nicely for a chip-in shot for hole number six. And for me, this is when my tournament started to go downhill. Full top spin. I played the shot 25% at mid. And then, you know, I hit the perfect ball. I thought it was good for sure. And then this happens. Um... This was probably the beginning of my demise on the pro tournament. Takes us into hole number seven. Hole number seven, no moving target, keeping it simple, 30% at mid. So we don't move our target until it's time to pull our rings. Here we're going to go with, you know, I only went with 0.2 top. I went with half a bar right side spin. You can see the, the odd setup point here, the offset. Perfect ball. And we're just going to run out of steam. Ultimately, though, I mean, look at that. The ball is heading for the cup. It looks pretty good. Um, you know, especially if I would added about 0.2 more top spin, that ball would have came in a little faster and probably would have been dead center for all in one. So that one there, it needs a little bit of tweaking, but the only thing that needs tweaking is the top spin. Hey, here we pick up a drop, though. Here we're going to go six top, three bars, a left side spin. I play with my orange ring at the rough line here. Ball guy line right of the sand trap, leaving you a little bit of great room shot, or a little, a little bit of room for a great left. But here we hit a perfect ball. And that leaves us in for a short chip in shot to try to get the eagle. 10% at minimum. You see I pull back my club and switches right to the end bringer. So we're basically at absolute minimum of this club. I play with a couple bars of backspin. Unfortunately, here I had to go four bars of backspin, which I never recommend on this hole because the, the ball guy line is going to be glitchy. So here, you know, I have to use more backspin just because I'm at, ma I'm at minimum distance of my club. Perfect ball. At least I got the good roll. At least I don't hit the spot where the ball dies, and you pick up an eagle on hole number eight. Hole number nine, um, this one... You know, got me in trouble. It also got my opponent in trouble as we both picked up birdies. Here, three left. Combined with three and a half top. Three left, three and a half top. Red ring over here by the rough. Half a ball of curl to the left. Perfect ball. Here, clip the rough and I roll out. So I lost some distance on my drive. That left me with this max with this max distance shot, you know, full top spin. Just really trying to find myself a good way onto the green or the fairway. Either one, I would take it. See my opponent's way down here. Quite a bit of OP. Hit a perfect ball, and wouldn't you know, this thing goes right into the sand. So. And I didn't save that as well. So hole six and hole nine, I picked up birdies, which basically, you know, negates all the drops that I had. So at this point, I'm really out of the competition to even try to win. Um, but, you know, I'll do my best on the back nine. I'm not going to waste any more practice tokens. So I'll just give everybody a heads up. Uh, on the back nine, I'm going to play every single hole. 
just 100% one shot. So I don't know how good my back nine material will be, but at this point, um, if I can't get a top three, it's not really worth me spending the Kingmakers and I'm out of Berserkers and it's not really worth me spending the practice tokens to um, to try to get you know a win. But I hope you guys do. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll start working on the back nine right now. Thanks everybody.